Hey, welcome to the 2013-2014 snowmobile season. We're really looking forward to it. My name is Brad Riley with AeroCharger. I'm Calvin. We're going to go over a few of uh, the features that we're going after, things that are new this year, things that are different, and uh, we'll go over some of the theories of why we do what we do uh, when we're designing some of the kits and the different applications we've got. Having 13 to 15 sleds in our race slash uh, R&D uh, effort, it, it allows us to do different things. Like this is Carl Cooster's sled from Jackson Hole last year. This was really a design intent for the 2013-2014 consumer kit. And what you do receive in your kit this year is, I mean, damn near exactly as this sled sits here today. This has an air to snow intercooler on it, uh, O2 gauge, boost gauge, this is creating the best power band we possibly could. Even the clutching that's in this and the gearing in this is now gonna be included with your kit that you get from us this year. How does this then transfer over to the powder market? Race sleds have a lot of different suspension because of the terrain they're going over. It's quite a bit different than the soft, fluffy backcountry stuff. You, know, you gotta have a wide front end for racing. You're trying to hit those gates. You know, it's all about time. You're going as fast as you can. You know, it's not about saving energy. Yeah. The track's another huge difference. You know, we run a soft compound for the backcountry, so it don't trench. You know, it gives you some lift. Where in racing, you know, you, you, the snow's harder. It's frozen. We got rocks and so we have a really hard compound track, and you know, screws on top of that with um, <clears throat> nasty titanium, titanium plates. plates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, as far as you know, race sleds, people think they're way different than um, powder sleds or backcountry sleds, and they're really not as far as engine package goes. I mean, we're all looking for big power, but anyone can make big power with money. The hard part's making drivable power that big, you know. You know, this is a Polaris uh, sled that we built uh, specifically for racing. But again, the package that's in this is the exact same package that actually we're providing this year. We're providing the clutch that's in this sled. We're providing the Helix that's in this sled. We're providing you know, the exact turbo that was in this. I gotta say, you know, the first time I rode the Pro, it was damn good. You know, we were still in development on the E-Tex the e and yep. I hopped on this and no one really had worked on it much. You know, I always just seen it sit in the corner and I came in there changing some stuff on my race sled. I'm like, well, I'm all fired up. I wanna take some out. And they said, well, take the Pro out, you know? Yep. It's got gas, so. I took it out and I was, I was kind of blown away at how good it was and I came back and I'm like, can you make mine like, like <laughs> this one? Yeah. You know, all the sleds are unique in their own, but they also all have their strong suits. And at the end of the day, doesn't matter what brand it is, it has to have good throttle response. It has to have good linear power. It has to have good top end power. The tune has to be spot on. At the heart of all of our kits is the Aerocharger Turbo. Um, you know, it's the premium turbo by a long ways. It's the most expensive, but there's a reason for it. The Aerocharger uses a lot of exotic metals. You know, these are metals that the other companies just won't do. A uh, prime example of that is turbine housings. You know, this is conventional turbo. It has a ductile iron uh, turbine housing. It's a cheap material, but you can also see how it, how it weathers and how it holds up. Um, we use a material called D5 Nye Resist. It's 38% nickel. It, it, there's not a better material out there. There's some stainless steels out there that would even be a lesser material to the D5. D5 is a premium material for very high temperature exhaust manifolds, turbine housings, things of that nature. We've used it from day one, we continue to use it. Um, even in our kits, you know, what's nice is, since we are the manufacturer of the turbo, we've modified this turbine housing to accept the Polaris gasket. So this actually goes directly onto the pipe without having to have additional flanges and things of that nature. We often get questions about, you know, the billet compressor wheels. The billet compressor wheels are cool. They absolutely fixed a problem. But the problem that it was was low cycle fatigue on diesel engines. Because of the elevated pressures that they run and the elevated uh, endurance times that a diesel engine was required to run, the billet compressor wheel allowed them to start with a forging. A forging is a stronger material than a cast. But in the snowmobile industry, 
we're not running near those pressures as you do on your diesel truck just pulling your snowmobiles up to the mountains. A good investment cast compressor wheel goes a long ways. It's the industry standard. It has a better surface finish on it and um, it's what we use it uh, at this time. On this aero charger here, we've actually turned it into a cutaway for display purposes. Uh, we encourage everybody to come check this out. It's a really uh, neat piece to study. Um, but as you can see, this is a very unique design to a conventional turbo. Uh, we have an oil reservoir built into the compressor housing. The bearings are air-cooled. Uh, you can see the variable vanes on this side, the turbine housing, and you can see how well the D5 Nyrus holds up. This has been out in the moisture and shows and all kinds of stuff. A lot of effort goes into actually designing exhaust systems. We've got two examples here. The important thing is for the exhaust system is to take the exhaust gas from the turbine housing and take it outside the vehicle. But we need to do that in a fashion that has the, re the least amount of back pressure and you know, quiet so that we can keep everybody happy in this industry. And if you look at these two designs, they're a completely open flow. You guys will know from your diesel pickups you know, the first thing you do for an upgrade is a downpipe. Uh, and a downpipe opens it up. Uh, you look at any top fuel dragster, you look at, you know, the Formula One or NASCAR, it's, it's wide open, big headers coming out. That's where the most power is. There's some people out there that let you believe that, you know, well, you need this contraption or that contraption. And if they don't flow, they don't work. It's important to the backcountry guy. What, you know, you've seen us go through several revisions. We've worked with you on, on a few of the aspects of this. Yeah, you know, the first ones work great, you know, in most conditions, but, you know, the extreme conditions, the heavy, deep snow, and, you know, not everyone has that, but, you know, we'd have some snuffing issues or whatever you want to call it, where it's plugging up a little bit and causing a bog. So we did. We had plenty of revisions, try to, you know, come up with the best design that works everywhere. You know, you kind of worked on making it a cleaner look, yep. uh, OEM look, so when you open the panel, it doesn't look all you know, hacked together, you know, it looks like an OEM product, which I really, I really like. You know, it's a full stainless steel construction. Um, you know, from the bungs to the, to the flanges, to the muffler, to the packing in the muffler. And then, you know, stainless looks nice, but we take it one step further and we'll ceramic coat them. That's for thermal management. We want to keep the heat inside the system and let it go outside the sled and not heat up the inside of the uh, snowmobile. A two-stroke has a natural frequency on actually the intake. There's a harmonic there where the sound wave will bounce off the back of a, uh, an air box and comes back in. It's, it, it's a little, some, little bit like what you see on the exhaust side. Um, you know, the important thing for us, the air box is to get the air into the throttle bodies. And because it pulses, what we want to do is have as much volume there as possible so that when that throttle body wants that air, it can take it all. Uh, this is a airbox off of an E-Tech, and as you notice, it actually has a very similar design to it and shape as a uh, Skidoo stock airbox, and there's a reason for that. Um, if we had more room, we would actually make it larger. If Skidoo didn't think that this was important, they would have brought that fuel tank up even closer and had that weight that much further forward. They go to a lot of effort to do that. So, this airbox works very well. This is a, an airbox actually off of uh, the Arctic Cat. And again, if you see, it's huge in volume and it also mimics the stock airbox. That's the most important thing. So this is a charge tube off of our RMK. We use silicone for a reason. Um, the inside of it's very smooth. It, it, it reduces rattles, it fits well. Uh, there's some flexibility in it. That's the only time that we'll use silicone. The airbox needs to have large volume. And if you think about that engine pulsing, that, that throttle body wants air and then it doesn't, and then it wants air and then it doesn't. And the most important thing is to have a large volume there or a large plenum to supply that air to the throttle body when it wants it. There are others that'll just take a silicone and they'll attach it to the front of the throttle body. But that provides a column of air that you now have to accelerate and then stop, and then accelerate and stop. And it's, it's a waste of energy. And at the end of the day, a large air plenum like this one or like this one, although it costs a lot more money to build these than it does the silicone, you get a full charge into the cylinder, making more power, your whole system's more efficient. We've covered the major components, but now let's talk about some of the smaller components because they're, they're just as important in quality and function. This is a fuel line. This happens to be for a 13 RMK. Um, this is a factory style fuel line. 
this is actually pressure tested and, and made professionally. This isn't, we're not asking you to ever cut a fuel line and here's a couple hose clamps because that's not the right way to do it. This is more expensive, but it's the right way to do it. We package them, everything's labeled, and you'll see that throughout all of our parts. Everything is individually packaged and labeled, so you're not having to dig through a bag of parts. Here is a, a part to go with the skidoo, and this is a solenoid that we put in there. We've already attached all the hoses, all the fittings, and all the labels. We're trying to make everything as simple and easy as possible to install, so there's less confusion on your side and ultimately more enjoyment. In my opinion, you know, AeroCharger is definitely the best value on the market. You know, it comes with all the gauges, it comes with complete clutching this year, it comes with um, the clutch vents, venting for your clutch panel, it comes with everything that you need to just complete the kit and be done. Well, we want the customer at the end of the day to have a good experience. You know, and, and this is a small detail, and it may seem small, but it's, it's all those little details that add up to, this is the best of the best. You get the best turbo, you get the best air box, you get the best whatever in the box. We're not giving you a bunch of options and saying, well, you, know, you choose, because at the end of the day, we you know, are or should be the turbo experts. We've done the testing and we know what works best with that engine. Right, and that's what you say, you know what works. You know, and as for a backcountry rider, we don't like to do R&D, at least from what I know, you know, and from my dealership, and you know, I've been doing it my whole life. I don't want to do R&D. I want to put on there what I know is going to work. Just little issues, you know, just ruin your winter. Winter's short, there's only so many good deep days, so you want to know your kit is going to work. So for this year, we've got improved electronics, we've got more vents, we've got the most complete clutching possible, uh, including gearing on the skidoo. And you know, what we're doing is providing you the most complete kit we possibly can get you. What are you looking forward to this year? I'm looking forward to riding, I'm looking forward to Jackson, and of course looking forward to seeing everybody at all the shows, heyday, all the fall shows, and uh, hopefully see some of you at Jackson, some of the races. Yeah, kits are in stock, we've already shipped a bunch of them this year. Um, you know, be sure to get a hold of us, uh, you can do that online, you can do it through the phone number, um, and we'll see you at the shows.